again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I have got a super lovely lacy stitch just for you. So easy to do. It's just a two row repeat. It is called the Flower Petals Stitch. And yes, it does resemble a cute little flower. And yes, very, 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 very easy because you are working into stitch spaces, not actually into stitches. So it is reminiscent of, you know, granny clusters in that sort of sense of the word. Very, very simple. Absolutely love it. This would be great for a wrap or a scarf or a blanket, a throw, an afghan, what have you. You know, absolutely love it. Mm. Now, for this particular piece, I used Lion Brand Pound of Love in the Antique White. And I, I did, you know, basically a little sample swatch. And with this yarn, typically you would use like a size H or a size I. I decided break out the big guns and I used a size J, six millimeter hook. And I'm going to use the same hook for today's example, which is some yarn that I have in my stash, good old Red Heart Super Saver. And this is the colorway of medium purple. And no, not sponsored for this video, but I always try to, you know, let you know what it is that I use so that if you want to duplicate results, you can. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Row zero, because this is the setup chain for our piece. Now, I already did my base chain. Now, this is just going to be for a swatch, which, as always, I always, always, always recommend doing a swatch to, you know, have you guys see if it is something that you would like, and also to familiarize you with the stitch before trying something in a bigger scope, like, you know, a full-sized afghan or what have you. So the repeat for the base chain is seven chains plus an additional four chains. So what I did was I did three multiples of seven, which is 21, and then I added my four. So I've got a total here of 25 chains in total. Now, of course, if you wanted to make this really, 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 you know, very wide, um, you would do many, many multiples of seven chains plus an additional four. You got to add the additional four, otherwise it won't work. Okay. So that being said, just, you know, chain up a couple of multiples of seven plus four. You could do 25 or, you know, what have you. Uh, and uh, we will get on to row one. Alrighty. Alrighty, so row one. Now row one is going to be the only one that's actually different because after we get row one out of the way, row two and three, that's going to be the repeat for the rest of the pattern, which is rather convenient. So like I said, I did a total of 25 chains. It was three multiples of seven plus my additional four. So I've got 25 chains. So we are going to do two double crochets into the seventh chain from the hook. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven right there. So into that seventh chain, you know, we can go into the top loop, we can go into the back loop, really whichever it is that you prefer. For the sake of ease, I'm going to go into the top loop of the V. So I'm just going to go right into there with two double crochets. There we go. And then chain one. And then into that same stitch, do two more double crochets. It is going to stretch a bit, but that's the nature of the beast. And then chain one, and then into that same stitch again, two more double crochets. So it's three sets of two double crochets separated by a 
chain one space here and here. All right, so that's the first one. We've got two more to do. That is to say, two more shells, if you will. So what we're going to do is, again, we are going to skip six chains. And into the seventh chain, we're going to do the exact same thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six. OK. One, two, three, four, five, six. So into that seventh chain, do the same thing. So we're going to go in with two doubles. OK. Chain one, two more doubles into that same stitch. Chain one, and two more doubles into the same stitch. Okay. Then we need to once again skip six chains. One, two, three, four five, six. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, into the seventh chain, again, do another sort of shell, if you will. It's not quite a shell because it's separated by chain one spaces, but so it's two doubles, chain one, two more doubles, chain one, two more doubles, all going into that same stitch. There we go. And then last but not least, going to skip the next three chains and into the last chain, that fourth chain, do a double crochet. Shaboom. So your base chain with your first row should look something like this. Alrighty, so we shall proceed on to row two. Row two. All right, so for row two, we're going to start by chaining up three. One, two, three. Turn the work. Okay. Also, actually, I just had a really, you know, Good idea. This also could be really, really cool if you use an extremely lightweight yarn or better yet, a mercerized cotton. This would make an awesome set of curtains. Just saying. All right. So uh, after chaining up three into this first chain one space, three double crochets. And considering how easy this particular stitch is, if you're going with a very fine, fine weight of yarn or cotton, it's not that bad because again, we're just working into stitch spaces, not actually into stitches. All right, so we've got three double crochets into that first chain one space, then chain two, and into the next chain one space, three doubles, Alrighty, and then hopping right over, you know, this doesn't count as a, a chain space because we didn't do any chains, going to this next chain space, next chain one space, and doing three double crochets into here. There we go. Chain two. And then three doubles into the next chain space. And then hopping over sort of the, the bridge, if you will, going into the next chain one space with three doubles. Alrighty, chain two, and then into this 
chain one space once again, three doubles. Oh, 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 hello. There we go. Oh, come on. Work with me. Work with me. Don't defy me. There we go. And then, last but not least, a double crochet into this last space here. Now, what you could conceivably do, which if, if you're inclined to do so, hey, more power to you, is actually you could do your double crochet into here, like so, like right into there. Um, however, personally, it, it's to me for this particular piece, it's a bit more work than actually needs to be done. So me, I like to go into the actual space with my double crochet, All right? Makes it a lot easier. And we will continue to do likewise for the rest of the piece. So that is the end of row two. So you've got these clusters of three separated by chain two spaces. Okay, and now we're going to go on to row three. Row three. Okay, so now row three is going to closely resemble row one, where we had three groupings of two double crochets separated by a chain one space. It's going to be very close to that. So we're going to start by chaining up three. One, two, and three. Turn the work. And then into the chain two space, two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, chain one, and two more double crochets. So as you can see here, it mirrors what we have down here, if you will. So then directly from here, we are going to skip across this bridge here and into the next chain two space, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sort of hop over and into the next chain two space, two double crochets. There we go. Chain one, two more double crochets. Chain one, two more double crochets. Alrighty. And then hop over to the next chain two space with two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, and two doubles. And then, last but not least, double crochet into this chain space. Now again, you could do a double crochet into that third chain from the bottom, but me personally, I find it's just easier to just go into the space with your double crochet. And you still end up with a relatively neat edge, you know. So that is the end of row three. Da, 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 da. So this row, as you can see, mirrors this bottom first row. So of course, yes, I want to do a full repeat for you guys because I, I want to make sure you guys get it. And of course, there will be timestamps and links in the description box down below. So with that being said, let's do a full repeat, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Alrighty, so for the full repeat, we've got row two, 
and so that's going to be chain up three. Now, the other nice thing about this pattern is that whether it's row two or row three, they're both chain up three in the beginning, so that's always a bonus as far as I'm concerned, don't you think? So after chaining up three into the first chain one space, three doubles. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know why I'm spazzing out today. I don't know why. All right, so three doubles, chain two, then into the next chain one space, three doubles. Now it might be because I've been crocheting nonstop today on a project that I've been working on. Oh my. All right, so I've got my three doubles, chain two, three doubles, then hopping over to the next chain one space over here with three doubles. Chain two. And then three doubles into the next chain one space. Okay, hopping over to the next chain one space with three doubles. Chain two, three doubles into the next chain one space. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. And then into the chain space at the end, double crochet. All right, so that is row two completed. And then for row three, going to chain up three, one, two, dip, 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 three, <laughs> turn the work. And then into the chain two space, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, hop over the bridge, going into the next chain two space with two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, all right, hop, skip, and a jump over to the next chain two space with two doubles, chain one, two doubles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. Chain one and two doubles. Alrighty, then last but not least, double crochet into this last space at the end. Da 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 da! And there you have it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And I really hope that you like this tutorial. Very, very simple, very easy. It's one of those great stitches where once you get lost in the flow, you really don't have to think about it too terribly much. So this would be a, a great kind of project to work on, you know, with a movie on in the background, what have you. No problem whatsoever. Once you, once you get into the groove, you know, and uh, yeah, I really like it. 
perfect for this time of year, by the way. So that being said, if you did enjoy the, the oh, this tutorial, please give a little thumbs up button down below. As always, I appreciate your appreciation. Hmm. And uh, like I was saying, yes, I am exceedingly busy right now. I'm working on a blanket. I started it on Saturday. And today, right now, it is late, late, late Tuesday, early Wednesday. It's a f approximately a five foot square blanket that I'm currently working on. Oh my, yeah, it, it's a lot of work. So bear with me, folks. At any rate, thank you so much for watching. Hope you're all doing really well. And uh, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and stay safe. Love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.